Hello and welcome back to Frank's Model Aviation Workshop. On this episode, we're going to continue the wing build on the Top Flight 60 size P40E Warhawk. But before we get going on that, I want to bring you in close to show you a concern that I had about the way this aileron servo is rigged in. And I contacted a good friend, Mike Bayona from Bayona's RC World. You should go check out his channel. And uh, he has a lot of good content. And I think you'd like it. But let me bring you in and I'll show you what we came up with. Okay, so the plans show this ball link clevis with two soldered threaded ends. And I really didn't like the way that looked. And the more comments that on other uh, channels that I've read said that those ball links wear out and they pop off in time. And you know, you don't want your aileron, you don't want to lose ailerons on a, something that you put hours and hours in and see it go into the grounds. So I contacted Mike Bayona from Bayona's RC World, and he gave me this idea to basically solder the two ends together with a Z-bend going down into the control horn, which it's kind of hard to see the Z-bend right now. Yeah, well, you can see it right there. But that's the way I have the uh, aileron servo rigged in. I've got it mounted. The servo is mounted in and it's going to be there for the remainder of the build. I uh, First, before I soldered those, I locked my up, both of my uh, bell cranks in perfectly straight, you know, at 90 with a pin or a T-pin on both sides. And then I got my Z-bend made, wrapped it in copper wire, thin copper wire, and used uh, some stay bright solder to solder that, and that will never come apart. And it works perfectly, I'll show you. So as you can see, got full left, full right, with no binding. I had to cut out this section of the top of this rib, and it shows it in the plans to do that. So that's an okay thing to do. I also cut half of this uh, conduit, pushrod conduit in half so that I did so it wasn't binding too bad right here. So I'll put a drop of glue there to hold it, but uh, I don't it, it relieves any binding. No binding whatsoever. And the bell cranks work perfectly as well. So what I did off camera, that I did that. I also made my aileron push rods. And what else did I do? Oh, I put the uh, shear webs on the, uh, the wing joiner on both sides. So the only thing I have left to do while I'm waiting on my retracks to show up, uh, I ordered them last week, so they, I don't know when they're gonna show up. So whenever they do, we'll continue. But all I have left to do is to drill the 5 16 hole in the leading edge center for the wing dowel. And I'm gonna go ahead and join together all my wing sheeting so that whenever I do get the retracks, I'll be able to jump right into sheeting without having to join them later. So I'll have them all set. Uh, I'll sort them out the nicest for the top side of the wing and then the not so nicest for the bottom, but they all look pretty good to me, so we'll see. So without further ado, let's get started. Instructions say to drill a 3 16 pilot hole through the wing leading edge for the 5 16 wing dowel, and then gradually enlarge it until you get to 5 16 So here we go. Okay, so three sixteenths first. Three 
Got to keep it as straight as I can. Thirteen sixty fourths. Seven thirty seconds. Oh, that didn't do nothing. Let's go to a quarter. Jump up right to five sixteenths. Done. Okay, there's the winged out test fit. Fits in there perfectly. Not glued yet, of course. Okay, the tools you're going to need to join your wing sheeting is a large cutting mat. Kind of saves your blades from dulling out too quick. Four foot ruler, metal preferably. Some kind of a uh, way to sand the edge. I'm going to have a T-bar. I got a smaller one to, a smaller T-bar to sand the seam after it's glued. Thin CA when you're ready. And a whole bunch of blades. And you're sheeting. Now the first step in the sheeting process of the P40 is to Take two, three by thirty-six by one sixteenth, seam them together, and then you gotta measure on one end a certain distance, and on the other one end a certain distance, and then cut it in half at an angle, and that'll do the one top and one bottom because of where that glue seam is. I don't want the glue seam that's rough on the top, so one of them's gonna be on the bottom. And then it'll be the opposite for the other side. So let me get set up and we'll start uh, doing this sheeting. Okay, now the first thing I like to do is true up the end or the edges. As you can see, it's not very tight right here. There's a big gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take as little off as I can. What I'll do first is I'll mark that. So I know which size which. What I'm going to do is I'm going to square up all the edges, this edge, this edge, this edge, and this edge. We'll get them all perfectly straight. So that way when we do our measuring, it will be perfect. So let's first, I think I first want to measure, make sure they're, if I got anything to play with. Yeah, they're a little bit longer than the three inches on, on the width. So what do we got for a measurement? Yeah, four and a sixteenth and one 
and 11 sixteenths. That's the measures we gotta do. So we got plenty to work with. So first we'll uh, cut these edges straight on all of them, or on these two at the first. So what I'll do is I'll, let me make sure you can see me. So what I'll do is I'll just take this ruler and put it on both edges. And if I don't see the middle, I'll move both edges in equally until I can see the middle just barely. So it'll be set up kind of like that. I want to bring you in close so you can see what I'm talking about. So this one's a little bowed in, so I got an edge there. And as you can see the middle, disappears and then the edge shows back up. So I'll be slicing it like that so it'll be perfectly square. I think first though I want to put a fresh blade in. You always want to have a new blade when you cut this stuff. Okay, and just lightly let the blade do the work, just lightly keep it tight against the ruler. Just like that, until it breaks free. Top flight kits, they always give you ample wood to, to uh, mess with. I've noticed anyway during this build, I never ran out of wood. Okay. That's one side. Now I'm guessing the other side is going to be bowed out, so what I'll do is I'll just put it on the end as you can see. There's a lot here and none on the ends, so that'll make this piece square. Or straight, I guess. Just lightly with the knife. Let the knife do the work. Just keep it tight up against the ruler. Careful you don't slide the ruler. That's that. Now I'll show you how I'm going to square up those edges. I'm going to use the edge of this board here along with the sander. And I'll just make sure I move that away. And you just take a few swipes with your sander. Make sure you're square. And you flip it over. Do the same thing on the other side. And that's one. Now the rest of them I'm gonna do in fast speed. Okay, now without even taping it together, it looks almost like one piece of wood. So I'm gonna tape one end, tape the other end, and we'll glue these two together. So I got them taped together. And if you remember in a previous video, I taped up my finger to keep from gluing my finger to the wood and to keep CA off my finger. Oops. 
and we'll start the glue. I'm pushing down on it as the as the glue dries so that the bottom side is going to be the perfectly flat side. That'll be the side facing up when it goes on the wing. This is the part that's going to make or break your finish. You always pre-sand your wood off, pre-sand your sheeting off of the plane. Once the sheeting goes on the, on the wing, you don't want to sand it anymore. Because if you do, you're going to have what they call the starved horse look. It'll be a wavy finish on the wing. So when I say pre-sand, pre-sand the entire panel all the way. This is the uh, side that I applied the glue. This will be the finished side. You know, always run your hand over it because you're going to feel the imperfections. see stuff that you might have missed. Looks good. All right, now I'm going to go ahead because these these edges are already square. I'm going to go ahead and cut these to the measurements that they give you on the plans. So I'll get my thing back out, my cutting mat. Let's clean that off. Get your 
hand and it says four and one sixteenth on one edge. Sixteenth on the other. I'm going to use my clear ruler. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna measure the four and one sixteenth on this end. And one and eleven sixteenths on this end. I'm going to cut them just a hit. I'm going to leave the line. <coughs> Here's where you got to really be careful. Feel the knife going through that glue joint. Okay, that's that one. I'm gonna flip this around. Oh, no, I'll, be, I'll just sit on there. Now, I'm gonna make this line disappear because this is the opposite side. It's okay if they're a little bit long. Then we'll just cut this. That's all the scrap they give you, about a 30 second of an inch. That will make two perfect forward skins, and I'm going to turn these over and I'm going to write inside on these. That way I know that those are the perfect size. Now, these were like that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sand this edge square. Like I did before. That 
Okay, there's the spar forward, bottom, top, left and right in pairs. That's all done. I'm going to put them in a safe spot, which is probably over here on top of one of these boxes. Right there, be good. Okay. The next sheets are pretty straightforward. There's no tapering involved. It's just gluing three sheets for the uh, bottom, left and right, three on the left, three on the right, and four sheets on the top, left and right. I'll put you in fast mode for that because uh, it's just uh, repeated stuff. So you've already seen how I did it. Stay tuned. Okay, you didn't see it because I didn't put it on video, but uh, while I was doing my sheeting and stuff, my wing that was standing back here behind me fell over and it busted some of the ribs, the joints off of the leading edge and trailing edge. So I've been spending the past, oh, three hours trying to get all those glued back up so where I didn't have any warps in my wing. And I did it, it's not warped and uh, now I can press on with the sheeting. Okay, I'm gonna be joining three sheets together times two. This will be the bottom wing. And uh, I'm basically gonna do the same thing I did with the two sheets, only I'm gonna do it in fast speed so that uh, you can see it being done and uh, it won't take as long because it'll probably take, I don't know, an hour or so to do it but I'll get started. Okay, that'll conclude the uh, bottom sheeting. Now we'll go on to the top sheeting and uh, that'll be all I can do until I get my retracts. Let's get started. Well, that was quite a long night. Uh, got quite a bit done. Got the uh, aileron, or not the aileron, but I got the uh, top and bottom sheeting, forward and aft, all done. So when I my retracts come in, I'll be able to just press on and uh, not be able to, not have to stop because I got all my radio equipment and all that stuff. So uh, we'll get this wing done, sheeted. Get the flaps built and the ailerons done and uh, we'll finally have a, a wing. It'd be nice to have it sheeted. But uh, if you like that, this type of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Like and share my videos and uh, I appreciate you. So uh, until I get my retracts, hopefully it won't be too long. I'll see you on episode 13. This is episode 12. Thanks for watching.